Oh, hi! I wanted to do this series for a while now. The series where we watch a fun movie and learn French language together. And Harry Potter seemed like an obvious choice because, first of all, I love Harry Potter. And it's a great source of vocabulary. Uh, we'll start with the first one and see how it goes. And the quick disclaimer, I'm not a native French speaker. I learned French all by myself. And if I say something wrong or mispronounce things, please forgive me. And because it's Harry Potter, I'm gonna mention the books a lot. C'est vrai ce qu'on raconte. When I first started learning French, I thought that on means we, but then I learned that it may mean a lot of things like they or just an impersonal uh, pronoun that you use to indicate a fact. Why don't French subtitles match what they say? It's driving me crazy. Even on Netflix, it's the same thing. They just translate uh, the English audio separately into the French language and it doesn't match French audio. So frustrating. C'est endormi is a reflexive verb, that's why we use it with être in passé composé. Even though it's not on the list of être verbs. Allons, allons, Agrid. Après tout, ce n'est qu'un au revoir. Ce n'est qu'un au revoir. Uh, my cat was just scratching my bed. Ready? Ce n'est qu'un au revoir, uh, meaning that they will see each other again. Because au revoir uh, means until seen again. Au revoir, see again. Uh, if they wanted to say goodbye for good, they would probably say adieu. Combien il y en a? 36. Je les ai comptés moi-même. 36! Mais... 36. Um, these simple numbers are rather easy to memorize, even though 60 and 70, 80 are relatively easy to memorize once you get the system, but the years still give me nightmares. I have to think really hard when I want to say like 1991, for example, because there are so many components in that. Est-ce que tu m'entends? Est-ce que tu m'entends? One way of asking a question is placing a ce que at the beginning of the affirmative sentence. So the affirmative sentence was tu m'entends, you hear me. And when you want to ask a question, you just add a ce que in the beginning. A ce que tu m'entends. And this way it will be a yes and no question, meaning that the answer will always be yes or no. Like the verbs in the English language, do, does, did, will, that you place in the beginning to make it a yes or no question. Yes. <laughs> Merci. That's a long S. Not meaning that the snake has a long S, but the letter S. That's a long S, S. <laughs> que s'est-il passé? Je sais pas, je le jure. Je le jure. Um, I swear it. I have never seen je jure used without le or another subject. Um, I don't think it's used that way. It's either je le jure or je jure que. I swear that's something, something. So you can't really say I swear. I swear by it, I swear that. Can you? Cher Monsieur Potter, nous avons le plaisir de vous informer que vous avez été admis au Collège Poudlard, l'école de sorcellerie. Il n'est pas we are also going to look at the origins of these magic words because a lot of them come from French. Uh, Poudlard comes from two words, pou de lard, which means bacon lies, and it's kind of gross. Uh, but at the same time, Hogwarts comes from Hogwarts, so same thing. Nous avons une sorcière dans la famille, n'est-ce pas merveilleux? J'étais la seule à la voir telle qu'elle était. Can we talk about Petunia for a second? I've never seen people defend Petunia. I've seen people defend Draco and Snape for having a terrible childhood, but I think Petunia deserves some kind words as well. 
First of all, her childhood. Her parents obviously loved her sister Lily more than her. Then Petunia tries to go to Hogwarts and writes a letter to Dumbledore that was in the books, and Dumbledore rejects her. And then Lily and Snape who were friends when they were kids, go through Petunia's stuff and find her letter to Dumbledore and mock her for it. Um, so, of course, she resents her sister and the magical world. Uh, but then she grows up, she gets married, she has a kid. And, you know, Dursleys are a happy family, truly love each other. And then her sister gets killed and Dumbledore <laughs> drops a baby at her doorstep with a letter. He doesn't even tell her in person that his sister was killed. And people might say that Dumbledore gave her a choice to take Harry or not, but I don't think he did, because what he wrote in the letter was, um, hey, your sister was killed by this dark wizard, and he might come back for this kid, and you're the only person who can protect him. So, of course, she takes him because... Why wouldn't you? <laughs> because you're the only person who can protect the little baby, even putting your own family at risk. And at that moment, Dudley is two and Harry is one, so she has two toddlers, uh, and she probably had to put her own dreams and plans on hold. She might have gotten a job, she might have uh, had another kid, uh, but she didn't. She had to take care of two toddlers. She had to feed Harry, she had to bathe him, she had to take him to the doctor, she had to teach him how to walk, how to speak, how to brush his teeth, she had to potty train him, change his diapers. Petunia didn't have a choice with Harry. She did have, she did choose to have Dudley, but she didn't choose to have Harry. So don't be so hard on her. Vous avez dit que mes parents étaient morts dans un accident de voiture. Un accident de voiture. To be fair, a car accident seems less traumatic for a kid than a dark wizard who might come back to kill you after he killed your parents. N'insultez jamais plus Albus Dumbledore devant moi. N'insultez jamais plus. Uh, when normally you have a negative sentence, you use ne pas, ne mange pas, for example. Uh, but here, jamais, and words like jamais and plus, replace the word par. So you only have to say, n'insultez jamais, on n'insultez plus. Si tu pouvais éviter de raconter ça, quand tu seras à Poudlard. Quand tu seras à Poudlard. Uh, unlike in English, in French you can use future tense after words like si and quand, if and when. Um, you know, in English you never use future tense after if and you rarely use future tense after when. That confused me for a while uh, in French, but you get used to it. On est pas en avance. Faut qu'on y aille. Il faut qu'on y aille. Uh, you use subjunctive after expressions like il faut que. Mon Dieu, mais oui, c'est Harry Potter. Mon Dieu, do you think wizards are religious? I mean, they say things like holy and how uh, in English version, and here as well, mon Dieu, and they celebrate Christmas even at Hogwarts. How do they think the world was created? Was it magic? Doris Crockford, Monsieur Potter, je n'arrive pas à croire que je vous rencontre enfin. Je n'arrive pas à croire. That's another way to say that you can do something. If you want to sound cooler than je ne peux pas croire, you can say je n'arrive pas à croire. Tu vois, Harry, je t'avais bien dit que t'étais célèbre. Mais pourquoi je suis célèbre? Pourquoi je suis célèbre? Harry here uses je suis as a more fluent and informal version of je suis. When you want to sound more like a native speaker, you should try to do this. Bienvenue, Harry, au chemin de traverse. So diagonally here is chemin de traverse. It's always interesting to see how they translate uh, the lore into different languages. Like here, there's nothing diagonal uh, about this place like it was in the original. It's chemin de traverse, which means uh, a crossing way. And it would be interesting to see how it plays out in the second part when Harry mispronounces the name. Il y a quelqu'un? Il y a quelqu'un. If you are a beginner and you hear phrases like this, it must be so confusing. I remember when I was uh, first learning French, I couldn't tell where words would begin and where would they end with all these vowels and uh, the letters that are not pronounced. Je me souviens de chaque baguette que j'ai vendue, Monsieur Potter. Je me souviens. Remember is a reflexive verb, so you can say je souviens. You always have to say je me souviens. I remember myself. 
Certains tournent mal. Il y a quelques années, un sorcier a mal tourné, très mal tourné. Il y a quelques années. When you want to say some time ago, unlike in English where you place ago at the end, here you should put it in the beginning. Il y a quelques semaines, il y a quelques années. It might be helpful to think of it as it's been several years instead of ago. Voldemort. Voldemort? JK gets inspiration from many French words and here it's one of the most obvious examples because Voldemort means uh, flight of death. And originally in English it was supposed to be pronounced like in French, Voldemort. T was not supposed to be pronounced but um, a lot of readers pronounced it so they left it like this. Other names for him are Tuseki, you know who, or Vusaveki, you know who. And the most difficult and long one is celui dont on ne doit pas prononcer le nom. Uh, he who must not be named. En tout cas, une chose est sûre. En tout cas, it's a helpful linking phrase. It means in any case. And that's why TV shows and movies are a great source of vocabulary. They have all these phrases that are used naturally to get the conversation going. Quoi, vous voulez ma photo did he just say, vous voulez ma photo? I think the original was, what are you looking at? <laughs> ne t'en fais pas, mon garçon. Ne t'en fais pas is a great way to say, don't worry. You can also say, ne t'inquiète pas. Tout ce que tu as à faire, c'est marcher droit. Tout ce que tu as à faire, another good expression. Avoir à faire quelque chose means have to do something. Uh, so, tout ce que tu as à faire, all that you have to do. Au fait, je m'appelle Ron. Ron Weasley. En fait means in fact another good linking phrase. En fait, je te présente. En fait, je te signale que tu es. En fait was put three times within three minutes. That's telling. If you see a phrase being used often, you should use it too. Allons, dépêchons, dépêchons. This is one of my favorite moments in the movie. Look at how awkward Harry is. It's like he forgot where the camera is or where he's supposed to go. Unlike Ron, who, is, who looks pretty natural in acting, even though he's a kid, but you can see that this role came to him effortlessly. Like, he didn't even have to act. He's just Ron. Vous allez être répartis dans les différentes maisons. Elles ont pour nom Gryffondor. Okay, the house names. Gryffondor, pretty much the same. Pouf souffle. Pouf souffle. Pouf plus souffle means... Puff blow, very close to the origin where you have half and puff. Serre d'aigle. Serre d'aigle, claw of eagle. It fits, uh, it's close to the original, even though there was raven claw, but their house mascot is still eagle, so it fits. Et serpenta. And serpenta. Serpent is a snake, so obviously it fits. I think you'll guess my house by the end of the video. We'll see. Un rouquin. Et une robe de seconde main. Tu es forcément un Weasley. Forcément, which means necessarily. You should remember this word and use it. Je sais qui sont les gens douteux. Je n'ai pas besoin de conseils. N'ai pas besoin de conseils. Uh, avoir besoin de means to need something. Also a very good phrase, used very often. You should remember it. Tous les sorciers et les sorcières qui ont mal tourné étaient à Serpentard. Susan Bo In defense of Slytherin, it's true that every duck wizard was a Slytherin, but not all Slytherins are duck wizards. Also, a lot of students wear hats. I don't think we see hats after the first movie. Oh, c'est le professeur Rogue, le directeur de Serpent. Okay, Professor Snape here is Professor Rogue. That's an old rare word that means arrogant or unpleasant, which is pretty close, but not uh, the same thing as it was in the original where Snape was supposed to rhyme with snake. You don't say tu es bien, you say tu va bien, everything is going well. Also we don't really see ghosts after the second movie. I think Myrtle appeared in the fourth one and then at the very end we have the Grey Lady. Also Snape's voice, I mean Rogue's voice is not it. I'm sorry, but I know that Alan Rickman's voice was very unique, but this one is not deep enough. You just notice it every single time that it's not the same. Oeil de lapin et ballon gomme change ce verre d'eau en verre de rhum. Oeil de lapin et ballon gomme 
Qu'est-ce que Seamus cherche à faire avec ce What is Seamus trying to do with water? Maybe listen for a second, Harry. His attention to detail is what makes Harry such a good wizard. Wow. Voilà le courrier. Courrier and courriel. These words are very similar, but they have different meanings. Uh, courrier is mostly paper post, while courriel uh, nowadays is uh, electronic messages and emails. Neville Longbottom's name here is Neville Londuba, which is Long Duba uh, Longbottom. The same thing, it was translated very good. And we see kids celebrating even though they don't know each other that well. They don't know Harry, they don't know Neville, they don't know Draco. Also, there are students from every house here. So why are Slytherins cheering for Harry? Et tu seras un très grand joueur. Mais je n'ai jamais joué au Quidditch. Jouer à sport or jouer au sport. But when you want to say do sports, you say faire du sport. Il était sur une trappe, donc il n'était pas là par hasard. Par hasard means by accident. Wow, Hermione! Elle n'est pas au courant. Elle n'est pas au courant. Être au courant means to be aware of something. The thing about the broomstick. Harry being on the team and having a broomstick was such a big deal in the first book because it was very secret. Uh, McGonagall tried to not reveal that he's a seeker until the match because um, that was unprecedented and we see that in the movies for a bit. But him owning a broomstick was against the rules because first years aren't allowed to do that uh, but she desperately wanted to win against uh, Slytherin who won um, the previous Quidditch Cups so she broke the rules for her obviously Il faut fixer la personne visée et Rogue n'a pas une seule fois cligné des yeux Elle dit la vérité Elle dit la vérité She tells the truth But how do you know? You didn't see it Nicolas Flamel Qui est Nicolas Flamel? Junior. It may look like I ignore, but actually it means I don't know. It's another cool phrase. Uh, if you want to expand your vocabulary, you don't have to use je ne sais pas every single time. You can say junior. One of the most frustrating things for English speakers about the French language is the similarity of the words and how to pronounce different words. Here you have corps, which means body. But you can also have cœur, which means heart. And when uh, you hear it spoken very fast, you can't really t tell the difference. So you have to always look at the context. Harry's parents look really old here. They were in their early 20s when they were killed. Uh, and here we have like 40 something year olds. Also, Snape is supposed to be the same age as Harry's parents. So he's like, what, 35 here? The spy work must be exhausting. Seulement, je suis préfet et je tiens la coupe de Quidditch. Eh ben ça alors. En plus, je suis le capitaine de l'équipe. Actually, Ron almost got it all. He won the Quidditch Cup. He was on the team. Um, he was a prefect, and he only didn't become team captain because Harry got it. Harry Potter and the consequence of lucky events. Sais-tu ce qui est caché dans l'école en ce moment même, Harry Potter? Yeah, it's all secret that a random centaur knows what's hidden in the castle. To be fair, in the book, centaurs read the stars and see the future, so that's why he probably knows. J'ignore comment vous avez découvert l'existence de la pierre, mais je. Also, we have Junior again. Have you seen TikToks about how Snape walks around the castle with his cape flowing? Uh, I think that's where they got it. Je t'assure, brillante, mais effrayante. Brillante, effrayante. You can hear the T here because uh, they talk about female, in this case, Hermione. If they were talking about a male, uh, it would be brillant or effrayant without the T. Je n'en sais rien. Je ne sais rien. Another phrase for I don't know. You can add it to je ne sais pas eh, and j'ignore. The literal meaning would be I know nothing about it. Tu es un grand sorcier. Un grand sorcier. Un grand sorcier who hasn't read a single book in this movie or cast a single spell. He's probably still thinking about what James tried to do with water. Mais en effet, il va mourir. En effet, 
a great phrase which means indeed. Un changement de décoration de la salle. That is so unfair. They worked hard all year. They earned all the points. They did everything they were supposed to do. And then Dumbledore screws them over, encouraging breaking the rules. And of course, they are going to turn out bad because why would you bother and play by the rules if at the end you don't get the result you were promised? I think you guessed my house by now. Okay, that's it for today. If you liked it, please let me know in the comments below and please recommend other movies to watch together.